going to three different organizations, mainly organizations that were terrible, that probably wasn't even going to the playoffs to going to the finals and winning the finals within a two-year period is amazing. And then doing it from a standpoint of, you know, being the, the head force of getting them there and winning it and driving, being the driving force on offense and defense and socialism outside of the basketball court and being a stand-up guy with no court cases, no allegations, no anything in that, that nature, and being able to create schools and opportunities and jobs and, you know, things of that nature to inspire other, you know, athletes to be like him. There's so many NBA players that want to be like him right now that's not saying it, but they're showing it. And that's because he's leading by example. So I would have to say that they both are goats in their own rights. And But in my book, Magic Johnson was always higher than Michael Jordan to me. Because really? Yeah, because I'm a Laker, and I look at what Magic did mm -hmm. when he first came in the league. He took he took over the control when Kareem got hurt against the 76ers in 1980. I was watching that game as a kid. And he, he played center, forward, and guard. He mm -hmm. put up 42 points, and he hit the great Dr. J in Philadelphia to win that championship in his rookie season without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's like saying, you know, we got a one-two punch, but the number one goes down, and all of a sudden the rookie, you know, comes through and wins it all against this season vet team right here. Jordan didn't do that. His rookie season, he was good, but he wasn't that good. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? I do. I mean, and not only that, we have to look at the fact that Magic Johnson, him and Larry Bird combined single-handedly, um, they saved the NBA. I mean, Magic and Bird took the NBA off tape delay. Like, right. they, the, game, the games weren't even live, and they changed that. So um, I'm not bad at you for listing Magic, but I'll say this, Snoop, and um, you can uh, respond to this, certainly. I don't think there's anything LeBron James can do, and this is not a knock, and this is not a slight. I think he's the greatest player of this generation, but I don't think it's anything that he can do to be a better, to be the best player as, as Jordan did. I think Jordan's probably still number one. And trust me, it hurts my heart to say this. I'm from Detroit. I don't like to give Michael Jordan credit for shit, okay? Right, <laughs> so right. this hurts me to say this, but you lived it. I mean, it is just, it was a different thing when that dude was at the height of his career. Like, nobody else could win. Barkley couldn't. Um, you know, he beat Magic. Um, uh, Gary Payton couldn't win. They had to wait to gravy train the championship. Like, they couldn't win. So, But, but back then, what LeBron is dealing with is what he wasn't dealing with. It wasn't like super teams, like the best players in the NBA all on one team. Like, it wasn't like that. It was like they were separated. You had great teams all over the league. The team LeBron James faced in the finals was like super teams. Like he had a super team and he was going up against a super team. And then you got to look at, well, you know, LeBron James went to the finals nine times in a row. In a row? Went with two different teams? So he did it over here and, okay, I'm leaving. Then I'm going to come back to where I left y'all because y'all need me and I'm going to take y'all to the finals a couple more times. Then I'm going to leave y'all, <laughs> go to L.A. because Kobe and them, you know, they ain't been winning in so long. They just so terrible in L.A. right now. I'm going to fix y'all too. <laughs> he, the only, he the only motherfucker that can fix the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they need. They should have been trying to get wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, it is a different league and I do think it's unfair to LeBron to do a straight up comparison because it's just it's just the way you win now is just so different. To me, it's like comparing Bill Belichick to Bill Walsh. It's like it's right. a different game. Like, right. you know, it's free agency in the NFL. Bill Walsh was an innovator creating the West Coast offense. Like, it's just different. And then um, we got to look at this, too. We don't never give Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain. You know, these are guys that did things that have never been heard of, 11 championships. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with all them points. Motherfucking Will Chamberlain, 100 points in one game. Like, that don't put you in that status. Like, these kind of shits have never be done before. But we forget about them because there's not a lot of footage. And one thing about black history, we bad at it. We terrible at black history. We have a forget point where we want to forget certain history and then we want to, you know, put in certain history above others. But if you really want to pay tribute to what's really real and what's fake, Bill Russell should be the one, not the two. A motherfucker that got 11 championships of that, because that's what it boiled down to when you start talking that Michael Jordan shit.
Well, he got six chips and he ain't never lost. Motherfucker, Bill Russell got 11. How many did he lose? Right. Not do, many. You, do you hold it against Bill Russell at all? The fact that he didn't play with the level of competition against the level of competition with Jordan saw, with Magic saw, with Bird saw, with LeBron saw. It wasn't the same. But you couldn't be, you couldn't be, put it like this LeBron is Bill Russell's type. They just right. have size. But I'm saying though, <laughs> Just when basketball was out at that time and era, all the dynamic shit wasn't created, so it was fundamentally dribble the ball five times, pass it three times, then look for the shot. So everybody was doing the same shit, so it wasn't like you had to be that creative, but it was still a, a game that was evenly based. Nowadays, the shit is everybody shoot threes, and they passing up layups, and dynamic offenses, and pick and rolls. That shit wasn't even created back then. So it was like more difficult to even – Get a basket when they start limiting us and saying to, to the tall basketball players, hey, man, you can't even dunk. Why I can't dunk? Because I'm taller than y'all. Like, they was trying to keep us at a disadvantage. So for us to actually succeed in them times puts us in a higher level as far as the level of right now era because right now we can do whatever we want to do. We get fouls for flops. We get this and that. You don't know what that era was like. You don't know how it was for a black man to have to go in these white arenas and be dealing with racism and dealing with all of this and then to try to have to score and then dealing with the mafia and dealing with all of that and then to be able to say, well, he had a successful career and did this and that. That, to me, is gold status, right. to survive that. Now, I'll say this. I don't think – I think as a player, it's certainly debatable, LeBron versus Michael Jordan. They're two different – I mean, it's, I don't even know why we compare them anyway because they're not the same type of, guy, type of guy. But in terms of a greater legacy, I think for sure it'll be LeBron just because – of, as you mentioned, not just what he means to the game, but he's empowered other players in a way. And I'm not even talking about from a social standpoint, but Kevin Durant doesn't go to Golden State if it wasn't for LeBron. You know, Kevin Durant doesn't go to Brooklyn to be with Kyrie if it wasn't for LeBron. Kawhi doesn't go to Toronto. Kawhi doesn't come to the Clippers because LeBron gave them permission to stop waiting on these bonehead-ass GMs to build teams around him. He said, go make your own destiny. And because of that, Players are much more empowered. They not only want to be dynamic basketball players,